It's time for today's travel and cruise industry news. With the latest from travel and cruises around the world, here's your host, Chili Falls. Good morning and welcome to travel and cruise industry news on this Tuesday, 21st day of February 2023, coming to you from Bedford County, Central Virginia area. Uh, we do have one slight change in schedule for today. Uh, the previously announced uh, Chili Chat with my friend Johnny Quinlan is actually going to be taped this afternoon because of his schedule. And um, it will be on the show tomorrow morning instead of this morning. Headlines for today, ship grounded on a sandbar. Cruise ship dry dock scheduled for carnival. Montreal to expand cruise infrastructure. Port Canaveral balancing rockets and cruise ships. Be the first to know about the carnival. I didn't say that and lots more here at 11 o'clock this morning. If you're listening via the podcast, always welcome aboard. You can access the podcast via my blog, which is accessadventure.net. It's usually posted within 10 to 15 minutes at the end of the show. Or wherever you get your podcasts from, just all the big guys, just search for travel and cruise industry news. And up pops the pet travel guy. Anytime you're listening and want to hop over to the video feed, there's always a description, a link in the description to do just that. You click on it, and jump over to see any pictures or clips or whatever that I might be using on that day's show. All right, let's see. I did uh, said about uh, Johnny uh, Quinlan. Uh, we're going to tape that this afternoon. It'll be on tomorrow morning. Um, I have a, and, and this is a message directly from Bethany. I have a uh, ridiculous number of picks that are loaded. And I didn't load all of them. There was just so much to soak in. Last night's Carnival Samba Parade was amazing. There are over 100 Samba schools in Rio, but only 12 make it to the parade. Six on Sunday, six on Monday. Each school's performance is at least one hour as it makes its way down the half-mile parade route to the Samba Drone. The parade starts at 10 p.m., so the full event goes until around 6 a.m. Each school kicks off with fireworks. Then there are several floats, thousands of dancers and performers, and a drum corps with each school. Locals clap, sing, and cheer for their favorite Samba school. And this is uh, just some of the pictures that, that Bethany uh, took at the carnival. And I was just, I was kind of fascinated by this. Wait till you see some of these. Now, of course, that's uh, Bethany with the shot. After she did all that and got back on the boat, she probably needed it. But look at the just look at the crowds, number one. Then look at the, down the parade route. And the number of people, that's Bethany all dolled up. The number of people that are in these um, parade formations like that. I mean, what's that? That's got to be uh, 100 people right there. And this goes on for miles. And then big, gigantic floats. And I, I tell you what, I was just, I sat back. I went through every one of her pictures. And I was just totally amazed. Uh, I've never even thought about going to Rio for Carnival. But now I'm certainly uh, thinking a little more in those lines. Because this, I, I can't, and, and this is not, folks, this is, um, 
not even 10% of the pictures she took. Um, there are four separate schools uh, that she saw in this bunch of pictures. That's not even all of them. So, yeah, I was just completely, completely amazed. Now, I realize Rio's a big city, but still, wow, unbelievable. So, thanks, Bethany, for, for sharing that with me and with your uh, groups. That was just amazing. I'm looking forward to more. So, our buddy Bubba, uh, let's see what Bubba had to say about uh, about these gentlemen. Uh, okay, what did I do with it? Ah, fooey. Anyway, these are a couple of the chefs from the Rotterdam uh, just showing off uh, some of the food on the Rotterdam. And then I've got to see what I did with those because I did hear from Valier is pronouncing his name wrong, which was my bad. Uh, Nate, of course, is up there in Alaska. We talked to him yesterday. And I failed to load those, so let me grab them real quick. Uh, boom, boom, boom. Because this is off season now for what what's going to pop up here. That, of course, is the Northern Lights. This is the wrong time of year to be seeing the Northern Lights up there. But they're showing. So hopefully one of my two trips to Alaska this year, I'll get to see the Northern Lights. And then our friend um, Rochelle is actually in Vegas. Of course, you know, she's always going to find a church. This was a... Um, uh, what was it? The Shrine of the Most uh, something or another in Vegas, which looked like a pretty modern cathedral to me. And she uh, ate at Italy uh, Italy, I think is the name of the restaurant. E-A-T Anyway, it's a, uh, it's a combination store uh, cafe uh, where you can get Italian goodies. So uh, that's in Vegas. She's in Vegas right now. And uh, that brings us up to date with all our friends. Now, did you know that you can earn points for future rewards with every rental of pro or product purchased from Scoot Around? Even better, it's free to sign up. With Engage, you'll get points toward mobility product purchases and rentals. Special members only offer useful information on accessible travel, exclusive officers, office, offers and discounts from the connected business partners and lots more. Don't miss out the, on the chance to start earning from Scooter Rail no matter what your position is. Do you have a bad back, bad hips, bad knees, or any other mobility issues? Think about Scoot Around. For scooters, walkers, wheelchairs, even oxygen needs, delivered right to your cabin. Scoot Around for all your mobility needs on your upcoming cruise. Of course, I'll be just to remind everybody, I'll be uh, taking off tomorrow right after the show, driving to Baltimore 
Thursday show will not be at 11 o'clock. Uh, we'll try to do a show earlier in the morning on Thursday since that is uh, embarkation day for me. And when I'd be doing this show, I'll be uh, uh, transferring from the hotel over to the uh, boat yard there in Baltimore. But anyway, so the show will be on Thursday, but it's going to be earlier, uh, assuming I've got a decent enough Wi-Fi signal to do the show. And then we'll see how the Wi-Fi goes on the ship. Eight days on board Enchantment of the Seas. And then I fly to uh, Fort Lauderdale and get on the Zandam to go to South America and through the Panama Canal and end up in San Diego. So that's all ahead over the next uh, 30 days. So still hoping to have an announcement later on today uh, on uh, the additional Alaska trip or actually everything's done. It's just getting the actual website so that uh, you can have access to uh, the search engine to get information on the trip and so forth and to book it, you know, so everything will, you know, be done. Uh, but anyway, that's uh, hopefully will be up later on this afternoon. All right. I'll be back with a, um, with today's news after a quick word from one of our network uh, sponsors. All right, today's top story, folks, has to deal with a sandbar. About 316 passengers were stranded for nearly 20 hours when a five-masted schooner, the Club Med 2, plowed into a sandbar off the coast of Panama. According to reports, Club Med 2 ran aground near San Blas Islands. The following day, the ship was able to resume sailings after a rather elongated inspection of the hull, which was necessary before being able to set sail again. So another ship runs aground on a sandbar. At least this was a little bit smaller and probably easier to uh, maneuver than the last one we had down in the Dominican Republic. All right, folks. Murray Cruises Gemini will be used as a temporary shelter for refugees after the devastating earthquake that struck Turkey back on the 6th. Gemini has a capacity of 1,074 guests and will help tremendously with displaced families who lost their homes in the 7.8 magnitude earthquake that struck south central Turkey in northern uh, Syria. Uh, one of the strongest earthquakes to ever hit that region. The vessel has a history of relief work and will be docked at the port of Iskenderun in Turkey. Uh, to date, 46,000 people have lost their lives. And then there was, and who knows, do you call this an aftershock or another earthquake yesterday that was like 6.8? Three more people were killed yesterday and more damage to more buildings. I was not familiar with Murray Cruises. That's M-I-R-A-Y. Uh, they've offered the vessel for emergency relief to to welcome refugees. The cruise line will not only furnish housing on board the ship, but will also furnish meals and provide 24-hour medical care to those aboard. The ship will house refugees until uh, the 15th of March, after which it will begin a planned season of short Greek island cruises, including visits to Santorini, Mykonos, Athens, Rose, and other top destinations. Carnival Cruise Line has released their schedule for upgrades and dry docks through the end of 2024. You know, cruise lines, uh, cruise lines, cruise ships go into dry dock for a number of 
items that could be checked off the list, sometimes routine maintenance, sometimes just cosmetic changes or combination of both, you know, things like new carpeting, lighting, new wall coverings, tile work, repairs, more power outlets and cabins, uh, maybe even improvements to accessibility issues. That one's always important to me. Sometimes new restaurants and features are added, especially on the older ships that have limited options. But currently, uh, Carnival has seven ships scheduled to head to the shipyard over the next 18 months. All of these dates were verified this morning with Carnival Cruise Line. Carnival Pride will be in from April to May of this year. Carnival Freedom, October 4th through the 22nd of 2023. The ship will be receiving the new whale tail funnel. You know, that's the one that caught on fire recently. Carnival Paradise will go in after that in October. Carnival Glory in March 24 to May of May 2024. Carnival Legend April 2024 to May of 2024. Carnival Splendor in August of 2024. And the Panorama September 24 through October of 2024. That's the Carnival Dry Dock schedule for the next 18 months. The support of Montreal, it's looking to invest heavily in its infrastructure on the island with a new five-year investment plan that will earmark over $335 million. The investment includes installing shore power for cruise ships. The cruise terminal is a significant part of the port's operation and has been a popular destination for cruise line since its opening. As a result, the city has a long history of welcoming visitors from around the world. The city's rich history, cultural diversity, and vibrant arts scene make it an ideal destination for tourists, including those who arrive on cruise ships. With trade and cruise ship traffic increasing, the port has announced significant improvements to the port area. Basically, it's a five-year plan. A question for everybody this morning. Have you ever sailed to Montreal? I have not. And yes, going to sailing to Quebec and to Montreal is on my bucket list. Possibly for later this year. I mean, I don't know yet, but yeah, I could definitely see squeezing that in this fall. Maybe in the summer months. Anyway, congratulations to Montreal. I'd like to do it. I've never, I've never been to Montreal, as a matter of fact. I've been to Toronto a number of times. I've never been to Montreal. I've never been to Quebec. I, my, my education is definitely lacking. We've got to work on that one. All right, poor Canaveral, but boy, they've been doing a juggling act. With the increasing frequency of rocket launches from the Space Coast, Port Canaveral is working hard to ensure smooth sailing for ever more cruise ships from the Central Florida home port. With both the busiest spaceport in the United States and the world's second busiest cruise port trying to operate in the same space, it's become a challenge to protect launch windows and keep ships sailing on time. The coming months are poised to be record-breaking both for the spaceport and the seaport, with different companies scheduling more launches than ever. There may be close to 100 launches from Florida's Cape Canaveral in 2023. <laughs> That's one like every three days, folks. 
three to four days. This includes launches from SpaceX, Blue, Ori Blue Origin, uh, United Launch Alliance, and NASA. At the same time, Port Canaveral is expecting a record-breaking year with more and larger ships home ported, as well as daily calls from visiting vessels. Ships from Disney, Carnival, Royal, MSC, and Norwegian are home ported to Port Canaveral throughout the year, while uh, ships from uh, Norwegian, Royal, P&O, Costa, MSC and Seven Seas use uh, Port Canaveral as a port of call. For each space launch, exclusion zones are established where no marine traffic is permitted. That means the ships have to sit and wait. So, and it depends on how the scheduling goes. Sometimes the scheduling can be flexible. Sometimes there's a very small window that these rockets have to uh, launch in so that they can hit the proper trajectory to wherever they're going. So it's become quite a, an issue for Port Canaveral to keep all of these things balanced and keep everybody happy, including the additional traffic around Port Canaveral on launch days. That's a whole nother set of issues. So it's, it's going to get worse, it looks like, folks, because everybody down there is uh, uh, going better than expected. And the last story today, how would you like to be the first person to get information on Carnival Firenze? Carnival Firenze is the newest ship in the fleet. Guests can now register to be the first to know about itinerary, special self promotions. According to a press release from Carnival yesterday, we embarked more guests from California than any other cruise line, and soon Carnival Firenze will provide a great new option for them, said Christine Duffy, president of Carnival Cruise Line. When the ship joins our fleet, she's going to bring our valued guests a new experience that complements our signature fun with the ship's spectacular Italian atmosphere. The Carnival of Ferenze will join the fleet in the spring of 2024, sailing from Long Beach. Carnival's newest ship will offer a variety of voyages throughout the year, cruises to in demand destinations like Baja and the Mexican Riviera. So looking forward to Carnival Fedense. Be interesting to see how that's going to be pronounced by the Carnival folk. All right, that actually ends the news portion of today's show. So let's hop over and see who's with me in the chat room. Yo, yo, Eddie's in the house. Hi, Eddie. MC is with us from Parts Unknown. Please give Chili a thumbs up. Thank you, MC. Do appreciate that. Katie's with us. Chili is interviewing my cousin this morning. No, Katie, I'm interviewing Johnny this afternoon. It'll be on tomorrow. Sorry about that. Mike's with us. Katie says, oh, bummer. Joanne's with us. Hi, Joanne. Dennis is here. Hi, Dennis. Amy's with us. The Traveling Shorts. Hello, everyone. Good to have you with us. We appreciate that. Uh, looks like a, a Mummers Parade. Yeah, the, I, the, I kind of thought of that, too. But even the Mummers Parade didn't have th that kind of shit, just the, uh, unbelievable turnout. I, I was I was totally amazed at that. Uh, the 
six traveling shorts. That looks cool. I agree. Cindy's with us. Hi, Cindy. Eddie's saying hello to everybody. Uh, peak season for viewing the northern lights is during winter. So excited for your upcoming full transit of the Panama Canal. Me too. I have, um, I'm looking forward to that. I've done partials before. I've never done a full transit. So that'll be a new experience for me. Um, I've, I've been thinking how I'll, you know, I've got to find a good spot on the ship to uh, get the best viewpoint for taking pictures. I imagine the most, probably the most interesting uh, point is somewhere on the front of the ship. Uh, so I'll be, uh, you know, able to see what's ahead of us. So anyway, I'm looking. I'm looking forward to. I'm looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to sailing on the Zandam again. It's an older, smaller ship. It's right up my alley. So. Um, I'm actually excited about that one. Uh, well, I'm excited. You know, I'm always excited when I go on and get on a cruise. So, I mean, I've been home for two weeks. That's uh, entirely too long. So, I'm glad to head back. I think Murray cruises as Turkish. I believe it is as well, uh, Dennis. I the, the name, unless and that's a reasonably new name, the name was totally foreign to me. I had not ever heard of that that I'm um, aware of. Visited Montreal many times while I was living in New York. Always had a fantastic time. Um, I would like to do that. Uh, Cocoa Beach hotels have greatly increased the price and are more difficult to find. There's been a lot of complaints for my upcoming cruise March the 4th, MC says, come on, peeps, <laughs> only four thumbs up, thanks, MC, we always appreciate the thumbs up, folks, oh yeah, I didn't take that off the way, what am I doing here, <laughs> I'm not paying a bit of attention to what I'm doing, we appreciate the thumbs up, always. Always, folks. And if you haven't subscribed, please take this as my uh, my invitation to join us. We do this every day, five days a week. And then again, on the weekends, if something major happens, I do it from all over the world. Wherever I am, I still do the show every day. There are occasional days when I'm, in, uh, I'm on a port of call or like um, Thursday is a travel day. Uh, for me to get from the hotel to the boat and embarkation day. So I'll do a show early that morning rather than at 11 o'clock. Uh, but yeah, we do this every day. As you can tell from the chat room, everybody in there knows each other and has fun and talks back and forth. So there's Blaine with us. Hi, Blaine. Hope you're back to feeling back to normal. Blaine was sick and wasn't able to go on our Loggers cruise. Missed a good time, too. Amy says, Sharon at Sea Travel and La Lila Loca said they wouldn't be involved in a vlogger extra extravaganza, too. Sharon says it got too big to uh, really interact with the guests. Yeah, it got pretty big. It did that. I'm sorry Tony feels that way. Uh, but, yeah. I can understand it because it, it it got got pretty big and got pretty overwhelming for those guys, especially. Uh, so maybe if they come up with a way of doing things, maybe to keep a little more control on it is a possibility. But we'll see. So, all right, guys, that's going to wrap me up for today. Again, this afternoon, I'll be interviewing uh, Katie's cousin, Johnny Quinlan, and his recent... Uh, a voyage on the Celebrity Beyond. Uh, Blaine says, it was a lot easier to plan during pandemic versus now with many cruises and group cruises. People have 
So I understand. Yep. Uh, anyway, there's just a lot out there, Blaine, that's for sure. So uh, that's going to wrap me up for today, guys. I will be back same time tomorrow, which will be my last show at home for a while, for quite a while. You know, I'll be gone for a while. So, but I'll be glad to bring you live shows from anywhere I am on the next couple of legs of my adventure. So that's going to wrap me up for today, guys. As always, stay safe, stay healthy. Think about cruising. Hopefully one day soon, we'll all get together on the high seas. Have a fabulous day. See you tomorrow. I regularly post videos on all facets of the travel and cruise industry. So if you like to keep up with the latest in cruise ships, ports of call, cruises themselves, chilly chats, and travel and cruise industry news, just hit the little subscribe button in the lower right-hand corner Hit the bell notification so you'll be notified when a new video is up or we go live. This video was produced by Chili's Cruises.